Hello, welcome to this problem solving video. Uh, the topic of this video is beats. And the title actually gives away this first question, but we'll go ahead and give some uh, detail of exactly what we mean by beats in answering this first um, part of a multi part question looking at beats. So, question is that we've got a tuning fork and we know that it happens to have a frequency of 400 hertz. So if you hit the thing and you make it vibrate, then the sound that it produces is a 400 hertz um, sound, a tone. And we want to use that to tune the note of a keyboard or piano or something. And we want to know how do we actually use a tuning fork in order to tune the note. So the way that we do that is by playing both the note as it's currently tuned and the tuning fork at the same time. And if those frequencies are close, then they will generate beats. And those beats will enable us to tell that they're not actually the same note. Because if you play 400 hertz and say 405 hertz, you're not really going to be able to hear the difference. But if you play them at the same time, you'll get beats. Okay, and that beat is actually really recognizable and so as you tune closer and closer, the beat disappears, and then you know that you were really close to that desired 400 hertz for your note. So in particular, suppose that the note is currently tuned to 403 hertz. What will you actually hear when the note is played along with the tuning fork? Well, you'll hear both of the sounds, which sound similar, but you will realize the fact that they're different, and you'll hear beats. And there's a nice relationship that enables you to figure out the frequency of the beat. And that comes from thinking about something like this. That the frequency of the beat, I should use little f, the frequency of the little beat, um, of the beats, is just the absolute value of the difference between the two frequencies that you play. So in this case, the frequency of the beat will just be 3 hertz, because that's the difference between the frequencies. Okay, um, and we can ask, okay, so what does that really sound like? I don't know what 3 hertz is. But that means that the period, which is just 1 on F, is just 1 on 3 um, hertz, which becomes 0 0.33 seconds. So you'll hear a beat that has a period of a third of a second. Okay, and that is something more meaningful. What that looks like is something like this. So in this plot, I've just done an amplitude as a function of time or position, doesn't really matter, that shows this wave. So in the red and the blue, we have something with a frequency of 400 hertz and something with a frequency of 403 hertz, both of which describe sinusoidal oscillations, but they're really densely packed because they're going with these ridiculously high frequencies um, in comparison to the scale of this plot, of 400 hertz and 403 hertz. So they look really dense, and they're pretty steady, they'll make this 400 hertz-ish sound, but when you add them together, because they interfere, you get an envelope that looks like what this green thing is doing. And so this green thing is describing um, what the resultant sound is. So you hear this 400 hertz variation all the way through, but you hear this beating, so you, every one-third of a second you go through this sort of period, so you go up and down and back around, so you go through two silences and two um, maximum uh, intensities of hearing this combined note. And what that sounds like is something like this. Okay, and you can hear this thing beating. You can hear it with this period of one-third of a second, being loud and soft and loud and soft, on top of this overall 400 hertz-ish sound. All right. So, let's think about this. The whole idea is you want to be able to hear the beat, and you want to be able to use that to tune the note. This only works as long as things are somewhat close together. The human ear can only hear and distinguish things as being pulses up to a frequency of 30 hertz. Beyond that, 
the sound starts to sound nice and uniform. That's why the 400 hertz note played by itself would actually sound like a nice uniform note. So if we can only hear up to 30 hertz, the question is, what frequency range would give us beats? And luckily, there's not too much to do here. We've already got the equation that's important right on here. So we know that the frequency of the beats is always just the difference in frequencies. If the tuning fork is fixed at 400, and we want the beat frequency to be less than or equal to 30 hertz, then that means, actually, that we want this F1 minus F2 to be fixed, to be less than that. But as we said, the tuning fork is always 400 hertz. So then we can get the range of F2s. So this needs to be less than or equal to 30. That means F2 has to be within 30 hertz of 400. And so F2 has to lie within this range of 370 to 430 hertz. Okay. So that's the range of frequencies that the note would already need to be tuned to in order for this tuning fork to properly generate beats and to help us out. Now luckily, when they're off by that much, you can probably hear the difference. So if they pass outside this range, you realize that they're really off. You try to make it closer, then they start to sound the same, but they're going to generate beats when they're played together. And so again, you can keep on tuning and find um, the proper note. Okay, so hopefully that has illustrated what we mean by beats.